and welcome back guys to another edition of test reviewing another sportster another harley davidson it's really busy here at uh, shores today so just managing to get on the spike so what we've got in front of us today is a 2018 sportster super low 1200t and do you know what i know what you're thinking you're thinking this is not your typical type of bike you go for mark and to be honest with you guys i've kind of avoided this bike and it's just from a personal perspective it's never really floated my boat but having a look at this and the price tag and the touring capabilities and it's on a sportster i thought it'd be a pretty good thing to have a go on and give you guys some feedback about what this thing is actually like whilst i'm just walking around this bike just having a little perv on it let's go and flick it into one of my cinematic modes and let's bang out the features of what we've got on this bike <laughs> back in the room so the first thing i want to point out guys is that from a personal preference i would be taking this windshield off it actually looks a lot nicer a lot more aesthetic with that windshield taken away but obviously we're doing a test review and the bike comes with the windshield so i've got to keep it on as in all my test reviews we've got to look at the features and obviously the therefore the benefits of this bike i just want to show you with this bike the pre-adjustable suspension which is a really nice feature so it's just in here um to lighten the load you turn it to left now this has been adjusted already to my body weight so that's all done the thing to look at then is the panniers so it's quite a simple mechanism open it up and you've probably just got about enough space for a few days trip but overall they feel pretty good i guess they'd be quite nice and waterproof so the other key feature that i want to point out about this bike i'm gonna have to sit on it to demonstrate the term they use the bike is that's a bit of a brat then. The term they use for the bike is obviously a super low. And the reason why is that the seat height is extremely low. So it's the lowest in the Sportster range. Uh, I believe it's around 705 millimeter. So ultimately what that means is that you can have guys or girls that are under 5 foot 5. Being able to sit on this bike and have both feet planted. Now I'm 5 foot 9 and this is super small. <laughs> but what it means to me then is that I'll be able to tour this thing around quite a fair bit. So now what I want to move on to is the sound of this bike. As I always mention in my reviews, this bike is stock, so therefore the sound is not going to be great. And as, as with most Harley Davidsons, a lot of the guys and girls will opt for a stage one which comprises of a change of exhaust um, a mapping done on their bike and usually a change of air filter as well so let's hear what this bike sounds like in three two one so as you can tell guys the sound of it is not great and the first thing i've always done with a sportster is enhance that let's give it a bit of a brap On the other hand, you may be someone who's quite comfortably happy with that, so you don't have to change it at all. So into the nitty gritty of this bike. Uh, just an FYI guys, my hay fever is so bad. <laughs> and I know this is probably going to gross you out, but I have got two pieces of tissue stuck up my nose to get through this review. So you guys better hit that like button because I am seriously suffering. Okay, so onto the bike. In terms of hand controls, as I always mention about the Sportsters, it is extremely simplistic. So you've got the engine, stop, start, then you've got the hazards, then you've got ignition on, which is just here, like so. Then you've got self-cancelling indicators, which I've always loved about the Sportsters, always helped me as a newbie. Then on the left-hand side, you've got the horn, always a loud one. That is actually louder than a normal Sportster. I am not even joking. So then you've got headlights. So you've got normal and then high beam. And then you've got the left cancelling indicator. On the left hand side where my thumb is at the moment, call it the spin button. And then at the front then as I'm pressing this button here, 
it'll show you total miles done on the bike trip a trip b time and then your gears now just a little tip guys for you guys that don't know most of us do but if for example i filled this bike up and i want to keep an eye on how much mileage i've done then we've got trip a here just hold the button here and then that should reset itself so you've always got an understanding of how many miles you've done and then when you need to top that tank back up again in terms of foot controls the mid controls for me I, i'm not a fan of mids at the moment i've i think on short distances they're really cool because you can really chuck these bikes about but just because of the way uh, well basically i've got the flexibility guys so forwards for me is a lot more comfortable but i'll give you some feedback as we're moving along today so without further ado guys let's get cracking and uh hopefully these tissues up my nose help me <laughs> right let's do it on the test review today i'll be looking at the maneuverability performance of the bike functionality all the good stuff that you guys like to know but straight away what i can say to you is i feel extremely low on this bike and already I think I'm going to have some fun with the manoeuvrability side of it. As I'm now about a couple of minutes into this uh, review, I thought I'd give you some quick feedback, guys. In terms of my ergonomics, the way I'm positioned on this bike, I think the seat that I've got is a bit like a sundown seat, so it's a big, like a big fluffy cloud, essentially. And the way it's positioned me is that it's pushed me slightly forward, so my, my legs are firmly wrapped around the tank, which personally I quite like, and the reason why... I just feel like I really flick this bike about. In terms of the hand controls and where my hands are positioned, it is a lot lower than I'm used to from my shoulders. I just feel like after, you know, potentially a long ride, it not necessarily be uncomfortable, but I think a slightly higher bar would, would help. With the windshield itself, yeah, it is deflected wind from my chest wise, but what's happening is because this windshield is just in line with my neck, I'm getting quite a bit of buffering on the helmet, which you may hear coming through on the microphone. But overall, I, I do quite like it. It's, uh, it, you know, I love bikes that I can really chuck about, hence why I'm such a fan of the Sportster, and I think this is no different. So the first test we've got is the roundabout. As I've got this trike in front of me, just need to be a little bit careful. But going round, this thing should be super easy to steer. And it absolutely is. I can really lead it down. In fact, I just made contact with the road. It's just super easy to manoeuvre. I got a feeling this could be one of the easiest sportsters just to chuck about. So coming into the national speed limit, guys, there's nothing behind me. So what I want to do is see what this bike is like in acceleration. So currently in first gear, let's get up to 60. And it just gets there super duper quick. I've always said that the Evolution engine 1200 is a really good mid-range engine for the Harley Davidson. For the uh, for the A-Roads, I've always found it really, really good. And actually on the motorways then, it's been another good experience for me in total. And I think what I'm really loving about this bike is try the brakes. Yeah, again with these, <laughs> not to jump from one subject to another, but I say it in my other vlog, in my other reviews as well, is that the Sportster brakes, they're, they're just okay. For the weight of this bike, um, you'll, you'll be alright on it, it's got ABS. So coming into another national speed limit, I want to get up to 60 and the next test I want to do, and this is actually really relevant for the bike, is understand how much vibration is coming through those handles. And one of the reasons why I look for vibrations in the handlebars is that on long touring journeys, you know, that's going to lead to muscle fatigue. And you want to have a real pleasant experience when you go in on long journeys, which this bike is aimed at doing. At 60, it's quite a windy day today as well, guys. Getting up quite a bit of buffering from the head, but in terms of the vibration at 60, minimal amount, hardly anything through the foot pedals, which is another thing that you should be looking for. But overall, it feels okay. I just think with a windshield, it, I would, well, if you want a windshield, you need a taller one. Unless, unless you are five foot five, therefore, you would sit shorter on this bike. Next part of the test we move on to is the suspension test. Let's see how she feels over here. Okay, so I've been recording previous experience about the rear suspension anyway, up until I've mentioned it just now. And um, what I'm noticing at the moment is that I probably need to adjust the suspension a little bit more and get it lighter, because it is still very, very stiff at the moment. And I feel once that's done, it'll be a much better experience. But guys, here we now go into the twisty part of my test. This is where most people start covering their eyes on their iPad when watching me. What I've noticed about this bike is because it's so low, you know, I can really tuck into those beds and I actually feel super confident. 
the grip feels good on the bike. Now bear in mind this is a relatively new bike so you know you've got to give time for those tyres to embed in and I can imagine if you're a smaller rider you want something you feel super confident on and this could be the bike for you guys then you just got to try it out. Coming up to my favourite part this is where you get a little bit of air. Here we go! Way Beautiful! Then coming into the next part of the test which is whoa, the tight chicane so it's a hard right hard left. Speaking of hard, the suspension is pretty hard. But break in nicely. Everyone watching me. And then sharp left. Oh, yeah, that's pretty nice. Couldn't give it a lot of beans out there. Got to be a little bit cautious. And then a sharp right. Hitting the pegs. Wait. I'm thinking in my head at the moment, guys, who or what would be the type of person that buys or goes for a bike like this? And I think it's someone who's really looking for a value Harley Davidson Tourer. Now that's the only way I, I, I can put it, because with the features that you've got on the bike, the bigger tank, the panniers, you know, and it is a Sportster, this would be a miniature version of the Softail, of the Sports Glide, as an example. And just, uh, I think this price is in a just over £11,000. You know, it's a good value for money bike for that, for what you get. And I think you've got to like chrome as well, obviously. <laughs> you know, can't leave out you chrome sexuals. Coming into the final part of the test, it's the A-Road test. So this is what I'd class as your, your motorway mileage that you would do, and especially on a bike like that, it's even more poignant to see what it's like. So I can imagine if you buy a bike like this, you are going to be on these roads quite a fair bit. And for me, you know, it does feel relatively comfortable. So let's see what it's like to overtake. Plenty of visibility around me. And yeah, on, as, as, as I say, as I say, as I say, on the A roads, it's just got enough power to do all the things you want it to do. And as I previously mentioned, you've got that of minimal vibration coming through the handlebars. There's a little bit coming through the pedal at the moment but it's nothing that would stop me from thinking this is a good bike to buy for the functionality of touring at a value for money level. So let's get down into the nitty gritty. What did I like? From a functionality perspective, if I thought about, right, if I want value for money, can't afford a soft tail, I want something with panniers on and a larger tank and something that looks quite cool when you take the windshield off, then this is definitely like that bike. I feel it's got so much to offer. And then you've got to remember guys with the sports day you've got so many options with the customization part so you can make this look your own so the big thing for me is the functionality that i absolutely love i feel that the windshield from my perspective i'm 5'9 it needs needs to be taller just so i don't get that wind buffering on the helmet maneuverability is fantastic again this thing is so low you can just chuck it all over the place and it's definitely aimed at that shorter rider as well but just remember, if you're a taller rider, because I get a lot of questions around, well, I look stupid, you could always apply some forward foot pegs on this, and that would look really cool. A lot of the gripes you get from sports the riders is usually about the range they can do on their tank. This thing just solves the whole thing. I think another great pointer is that you can take a pillion quite nicely on this bike. You know, it is designed for that. I think what I'm not a fan of, from my perspective, is, is the mid control. So that's it, really. I think, you know, aesthetics, I've kind of mentioned that in my pros. It's not the typical sportster that I would go for. But again, sportsters are very specific to the person of likes and dislikes. And you can just customise the sh shucks out of it. Other things that I'm not too sure on is the rear suspension. I'd like to perhaps do some more testing on this. But it does boast about having great suspension. And for me, I just haven't really felt that today. And I've got to be honest about that feedback. But yeah, overall, I think it's a really good functional bike. And that's, that's the main thing. That's why... I guess Harley have done a bike like this because of functionality, touring capability at a, a value for money level that's less than a soft tail. So they've done it. Not much more to add there, guys. But as always, thank you very much for watching. But you know, guys, I appreciate all your support. Make sure you share, like, sub subscribe even. And tell your friends about my channel. <laughs> this is Motor New Brother signing off on a, a pretty busy Shaw Harley Davidson day. Take care. Peace.